This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. This is a very special show. We have part one of our Star Wars A New Hope commentary that we recorded, oh, let's see, at the beginning of May. I've been saving this one for a while, and ultimately what I decided to do is I released the entire thing, the entire film commentary run by myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Club, and we put it on Patreon, but we put it on Patreon for free. So whether you are an existing patron, uh, curious about starting it, or don't know what Patreon is, you can go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi and listen to the entire thing completely for free. What we have here is the beginning of the movie to about right before they enter Moss Eisley. It gives you an idea of what the commentary is like and how it goes. And I think it turned out really, really well. In fact, much better than I ever could have dreamed is because of these awesome guys that I get to share the Patreon show, CWK, Pour Over With. And it's it's great fun. Your feedback has been tremendous. So if you've already heard it, this is just the beginning of that. If not, I hope it will encourage you to go to our Patreon page and listen to the entire thing again completely for free. If you are not familiar with what Patreon is, it is a place for you to go and support creators financially. And you get extra content and exclusive things that you can't find or listen to or watch anywhere else. So go ahead and check it out. See what you think. I would love to get your feedback. What would make you want to support Coffee with Kenobi on Patreon? What would you like to see there? And if you already are, what do you think about what we're doing so far? And what can we add to help enhance your Coffee with Kenobi Patreon experience? So without further ado, here is part one of our Star Wars A New Hope feature length commentary. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Coffee with Kenobi feature-length movie commentary of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. I am one of your hosts, Dan Z, joined by my two great Star Wars buddies. First, let's bring in Corey Club. Hey, this has been a long time coming, I think. We're excited to do it. Yeah, oh my goodness. We've been talking about this for a very, very long time. And now that we've got uh, the third wheel of our Star Wars tricycle, Mr. Tom Gross... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Of course, I love the cycling uh, reference, and thank you for including uh-huh. that on that. But uh, yes. yes, hello, everybody. This is something that we've been. I, wait, am I the big wheel? Or are you the small wheels? How does that? Uh, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm one of the back wheels. Yeah, <laughs> no, the, you know the back wheels uh-huh. keep things going. Yeah. Said that? Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> yeah. This is exactly <laughs> why people are good listening start. to this. Yes. All right. So, so we've been talking it. about this for a very long time. Obviously, May the 4th is upon us, and there's no mm-hmm. better way to celebrate that than watching A New Hope, to me, and I've been wanting to do a commentary for a very <laughs> long time, so we've got something really exciting planned, and the way we're going to do this is we have found uh, A New Hope on Disney+, Plus and on the, your mobile device, uh, whether it's an iPad or a, an iPhone or what have you, you can download the movie, so you don't have to worry about the buffering and the streaming. So we've all done that. We've all downloaded A New Hope. We've all got it queued up to zero, 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 zero. So we're going to do a countdown of three, two, one, and then hit play. But before we do that, really, really quickly, because I know we're all excited to watch this movie together, which is great. I mean, it is cool that we all get to watch this movie together as a Star Wars family, which is wonderful. But, Corey, I'm going to throw it to you first. What does this okay. original Star Wars movie mean to you? And talk about your memories of the first time you saw it. <sighs> Boy, I'd like to save some stuff for that show, but I will. Um, You know, this is, everybody asks the question, where do you start in Star Wars? Uh, You know, and which one do you watch first? Which order does it? And this, to me, is the Star Wars movie. If uh, you're a fan who've never seen Star Wars, this is the one Star Wars movie to see. Um, This is it. This is the one that made everything happen. I think, to me, I kicked everything off. Um, I watched it on VHS. Um, I think it was my cousin's copy or something. He had recorded it off, off TV when it was on TV for the first time. And um, I remember that label on the VHS table, tape was like getting like torn off so much time to, to the times we've watched it. And, you know, just going through the, I remember it coming back in uh, the nineties of the re-release. Uh, and that was a huge deal. 
uh, get ready for, um, you know, the prequels and stuff. So it's just, to me, this is, this is Star Wars as wholesome as you can get. I mean, if you, this is the pinnacle of the classic characters, the classic sayings, uh, this is, I mean, if you had to live on an island for the rest of your life and you picked a Star Wars movie, this is the one. I mean, I, it just seems like it's it's got such great character. It holds up well. Um, I'm excited to watch it again. It's been a long time for me. So um, I can't remember the last time I did watch it. Um, so it's definitely nostalgic and, and definitely gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling. I'm excited to share with you guys, too. I think it's one that we've actually never we'll watched this together. I know, um, that's true. Uh, Do you remember as, the first group, time you so, ever saw it? Ah, oh, man. I I think I would have to go back to my cousin's house um, in their basement uh, just watching it, you know, that I can that I can really actually remember. Um, I think that's got to be, a, yeah, a VHS copy of, of it being released on TV and watching it. I think that's what it was. I love it. Tom, what about you? What does this movie mean to you? And re- recant for us if you know the first time you saw it. Well, I mean, this is the movie that... You know, it's really kind of dumb to say it's, it's, I can, I can mark this movie as the start of so many things in my life, um, which sounds kind of ridiculous, but hey, it's been around over 40 years. So why is that ridiculous to say? So, I mean, you know, when I think about my love of trading cards, my love of action figures, my love of computers, my love of space, it all comes from this moment when I saw Star Wars for the very first time. I uh, I don't rem- have many. I don't have a lot of memory from the first time I saw it. I know who who I went with. My grandma, my mom's mom, uh, our Grammy counter. She took me to this film for the very first time. I do remember that, but there's not much from that first time seeing it that I remember. It's the second and third times that I saw it that I have uh, some memories with when I went with my family and then I went with some friends. And I'm sure I'll mention some of those as we watch the film uh, tonight. Um, But, you know, this, I, 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 Corey said it. I mean, when, when people talk about what's, what, you know, where should I start in the Star Wars saga? I mean, why, why wouldn't you start where everybody else did? And, uh, you know, learn about the characters that people fell in love with first. And, um, and I will never forget how even like my dad, now talk about my dad quite a bit tonight. I think, um, uh, my dad said to me after seeing this, he really didn't get into the movie, but I remember him saying in the car ride home, I've never seen a movie like that before. And I remember my mom saying, well, in what way? And my dad said, I've never seen anything like the things we just saw on screen, space travel, a Death Star, uh, you know, the special effects. My dad just raved about the special effects, even though he could care less really about the story and science fiction and all that. For him, it was the spectacle. And so, uh, so those are, I mean, I guess that's some of the things that really uh, drew me into the story to start with and has held on to me for 40 plus years. That is absolutely beautiful. What a wonderful memory. Seriously, that that is why this movie means so much to so many people, because of the impact it has had on so many of us. I mean, Coffee with Kenobi exists because of this movie. I mean, everything in our fandom, Mm -hmm. celebrations, collections, friendships, everything, you know, a lot of it started because of Star Wars and the original one. I've just told the story many times, so I'll keep it brief here. But basically, when it came out, it was I knew about it in we wanted to see it, but we weren't allowed to see PG movies at the time. And <laughs> my cousin had said, hey, you know, it's okay. There's no blood. Yes, there's some shooting, but it's all lasers and there's no blood. So I think it should be fine. So we've tried to see it three, four, five different times. And every time we went, it was sold out. And it was always very crushing, very soul crushing because we really wanted to see it. It looked really cool. We liked the commercials. Um, we liked the music that we heard and, and people that we knew that had seen it said it was amazing. So one uh, famous evening... At at uh, uh, it was a drive-in in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was in the summer of 1978, and my dad goes up to this little. We we pull down in this little driveway, and it was the Dew Twin Drive-in in Metairie, Louisiana. And he, we pull up to this little tiny hut, and my dad rolls down the window. It's me, my brother, my mom, and my dad, and he says, four for Star Wars," and 
I I said, what? And he says, we're going to see Star Wars tonight at this drive-in. So the first time I saw Star Wars was a drive-in. And I, I had so many goosebumps. I was so excited. I was finally going to see it. I didn't have any time to mentally prepare for what I was about to experience. But nothing really could have prepared me for it. It started, I remember before it started, they played this two or three minute cartoon called Godzilla versus Bambi. And this cartoon deer comes out with very crude animation. All of a sudden, this giant green foot steps on Bambi, and the cartoon was over. I remember that very, very well. <laughs> Godzilla won, kids. Wow. Are keeping score at home. And so then the movie started, <laughs> and I don't remember a ton of you know images. I, I remember the opening sequence, I remember the trash compactor, I remember Darth Vader. And I remember when it was over, I wanted to watch it instantly. And, you know, here we go. Coffee with Kenobi host. It's It's been unbelievable. I can't wait to watch it with you guys. And I think you're right. I don't think we've ever all watched this together, the three of us. So I think we need to start it. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's okay, do so, it. I'm ready. So again, countdown. So, yeah, well, for those of you, well, let's explain how to do it before we start. But for those of you uh, listening along, go ahead and queue up uh, A New Hope on Disney+. Plus. Uh, download if you want to avoid the buffering thing, but we've got it queued to zero, 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 zero. So I'm going to go three, two, one, play. So that's what we'll do. We'll go three, two, Ooh, one. Wait, play. now is it on play or after before play? On play. Three, two, two. one, play. Okay, you guys ready? Gotcha. <laughs> yes. Ready? Okay. Come ready. Finger on it. Okay. Three, two, one, play. Here we go. Oh. 20th Century Fox. A wonderful, iconic drum beat. For so many it's years, here the belonged to Star Wars. Yes. I thought so too. Oh, oh my gosh. Sure. Yes. For sure. <laughs> I find it interesting that that drum beat is just so kind of monotone and, and tarnished. I don't know. It's just, but that's filled is what it feels like. Vintage. Yeah. Oh, there it is. That logo. When I saw the Rise of Skywalker with my son, he grabbed his chest and gasped when his when he first saw Star Wars <laughs> on the big screen for the first time. Uh, here's a trivia question. Of course, the iconic John Williams music. Oh boy, what year was it titled Episode Four: A New Hope? Oh man, this movie came out in 1977. Well, it had to be before I'm Empire Strikes Back. I'm guessing 1980. 1981. I was say. It was 1981. A year after Empire was out is when they came. Back out, and they re-released it, and they had episode four, A New Hope. So uh, it's great. The opening crawl, whenever I show this to my students, we talk about mythology and how it is all set up. And I say, look, a lot of kids just are tempted to ignore this text. I'm like, no, you need to read this. This fills in everything. It actually, it's the second little paragraph is the plot of Rogue One, which is pretty wild. Mm. Uh. But it tells a lot. This is, of course, oh. in media res. This is the Latin term for when you start a story in the middle and you rewind to the beginning to find out where the characters got to where they're at. Well, the other thing I was going to say, just for, you know, seeing this back in 1977, like you guys were talking about earlier, like, well, this was new. This technology of kind of seeing this on the screen like this, it's never happened before. So just to kind of start off with this, the music, the, the like I said, the logo, to me, that just really very draws you in. You're like, wait, I'm waiting for action or dialogue. And yeah, you don't get it till you know, really good portion the beginning of this film so the pan down of course mm-hmm. how are you gonna say something oh i mean so much <laughs> this is yes. where when i was watching with my when i was watching with my best friend who's across the, the street right here i was elbowing him because i saw him i saw this before he did <laughs> and i was elbowing him saying uh, get a load of this it still seems like a gargantuan ship. We know it's a model. It's huge. We've seen it a million times. Right. No matter what size screen you see it on, it still absolutely blows you away. It's just the idea of, too, like you said, the special effects itself. Like, it's just amazing to think about how these guys were so inventive. And it was just kind of making it... Uh, for, so original, like that's what I'm thinking. Well, is, what does it look like? What sizes? Are we, what models? Are we? They, they had those all figured out, apparently. So it's crazy. It's madness. And that there was always that <laughs> that phantom C3PO behind 3PO, and I thought, is that another C3PO? You know, you the mind reels because you don't really know what to oh, expect from this. And again, they're setting context. There's no escape for the princess this time, be, indicating that there have been lots of other adventures before there's this There have been started. other times. Yeah. 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 
one of my favorite things about this movie more than any of the other stars movies is the sound effects just seem extra rich and detailed like the clicks the beat everything just sounds incredible Oh, all the industrial like sounds right now of it getting clawed into the the bay of that mm. that star that star, or star destroyer. I always wondered these guys like are all set up to blast. I mean, like first two guys through this this door are gonna get killed. Boom, they make it through. Oh no, they <laughs> don't. So, we sync this so perfectly. <laughs> this is great. This is there's a part coming up where they chase the, the rebel officers that always throws me angle wise. You'll see what I mean here in a second. It's overwhelmed. See, see why are they see shooting the to the right? Helmets. Why are they shooting to the right yeah, when everybody ran know. to the left? You can't see. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Get them. And this this we'll makes say, me laugh every time. Yeah, this every is, time they miss. This is why controversies have a bad name. But they're not paying uh, attention. And then we get one of the most incredible it. entrances in the history of cinema. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, the music. Mm-hmm. Dude, the white on black, just that striking figure. Yeah. Oh, it's a great call. Yeah, as a designer, what does that do for you, that part right there? Oh, it's, it's darkness has entered light right there. Boom. Beautiful. Something and that's it's worse just, there, maybe. I don't know. Well, it's striking. And then you get the ultimate yeah. contrast. You get. Leia Organa, who of course we haven't met yet, where about all we see is the hand, the slender hand inserting the disc into R two D two. It's a beautiful shot too, the the pink lighting and the mm-hmm. the smoke. That's one thing too about the film is like the the lighting and the, like everything set up was just like almost perfectly like. Uh, um, if you look at something like down the middle, it's almost like half and half is the same in, in this ship. Um, very symmetrical. Yeah. And this is where people talk about her imitating a British accent in some parts of this film and then oh. other parts not. And I, you can kind of hear it here when she talks to Tark. And I'll explain later how she uh, rationalizes it. That sound of that throat being... Yeah. Uh, if there's any question of his power, mm-hmm. this, uh, this resolved that question. I think that the... the the strength. I mean, mm-hmm. You figure like superheroes, Superman and Hulk and stuff like that. You know, the strength in general, like that, you know, clicking of the stormtrooper armor is just so great. I always think of the comic book scene in here where you get her commentary because she goes, "Well, mine's set for kill." <laughs> You oh that? yeah, yeah, that's right. Leia says that. Yeah. I always think that. <laughs> and this guy is in all caps. Yes, I like that they have to confirm that she'll be all right. She'll be all right. You know, this is when I started the viewers, like, some of the vocabulary. Mindless philosopher, blob of grease. I had, someone had. I remember my mom having to explain to me why that was funny. Oh. <laughs> This scene always captivated me, too. The fact that they could escape, and they seemed weightless, and where are they going to go? Does that that launch into the unknown? Right. Where would they go, you know, of all places? Again, 3PO, even though there's a lot of chaos going on, he seems very calm. I mean, it's and honestly, as this his character evolves, we don't see a lot of time like that where something chaotic is happening. He doesn't seem very calm, but here he does. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Maybe thinks this is it's all okay. And here's here comes the uh, accent. This is uh, leads right into uh, her appearance in Rebels, and then the the novel. Leia, Princess of Alderaan by Claudia Gray. Some of this. Mm. It's not a very heavy accent, but she tried to explain that from Alderaan, it's more of an elevated language, so she she talks in a more British accent. Then when she's around Han and Luke, she doesn't have an accent at all. To me, I don't really hear much of an accent, but that's what people have talked about. 
That's interesting. Never heard of that before. That's new to me. Also one of the few times that the Imperial officers don't seem scared to death of him. Well, I was going to say that too. Uh, The fact that these guys are talking to Vader, and I always felt like, you know, he doesn't really have a rank. He's just kind of an enforcer. And, you know, he's like, all these guys are like, he's like outside the military. They don't really trust him. And as, as a kid, I remember thinking like, who is this guy? Like he's saying, they're saying yes, sir, to him and stuff. But like, I don't know. It's, I always felt like it was odd to me as a kid. Right. Eight minutes, 54 seconds until we actually get to see a planet. And this is how the world building of George <laughs> Lucas started. This image reminds me of the story of Star Wars cover of the record. Remember that, Tom? Yes, yes. <laughs> what I was thinking of is, if you haven't read Anthony Daniels' IMC through PO, you've, it's a must read. I can I just appreciate the effort it took for him to film these scenes um, in this kind of makeshift costume that he describes as falling apart during filming <laughs> and and how hot it was and uncomfortable and he couldn't sit down in it. And it was took so long to put on that in between scenes, he wouldn't take it off and they would just lean him up against the wall kind of on a, in like a, like an incline yeah. and just kind of put him back on that. And forgot about him. Like he was a prop and he, and yeah. he kind of felt that loneliness. Mm-hmm. This, this scene has always stood out to me because he seems mean and cold and callous. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a planet that yeah. is the opposite of cold, where R2 seems kind of like a a sweet little puppy yeah. that just wants to be with his friend, but he's got a mission. He's got to go rescue Timmy from the well. You know, he's got the lassie thing. But then he's still happy because he's doing his thing. And there's one of the classic wipes that indicates the transition. Try not just to be pulled in by the music and the imagery here. I was just going to say that the music, and because they always have the classic, just, I don't know, it feels so iconic itself. Like, how did George, or George Lewis, um, John Williams think to do this? I mean, it, again, another master stroke and just an effort to put something original together. You know what that skeleton is supposed to be? Either um, of you? No, I don't. Do you, Tom? No, I, d- I do not know. No. <laughs> Tom Tom is muting while he takes a giant chow of potato chips. Chow of food. It's a it's a crate it's a crate dragon. That's a crate dragon. That later they call the Oh Obi-Wan. sure. Uh, now this is I of always course, thought the crate the dragons same... were the Go ahead. Oh the crate dragons. I thought they were the, the those giant drewbacks. Drewbacks? No, no. Uh, this back, is a scene back. where um, Obi or where Indiana Jones threatens to blow up the Ark. Yeah, to Belloc. <laughs> yeah, same exact uh, location where they filmed it. Same area. Wow. Yeah, same exact area. Wait a minute. You're right. Yeah, I never put that together. Dan, you're full of ideas. <laughs> Just this. Yeah, one of the few parts where there's no music. It let the tension build with some bleeps and bloops and some unusual creatures. Bleeps and bloops. These Jawas with yellow eyes as opposed to the red-eyed uh, Jawas from the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. They're on world versus off world, right? Right. They've seen some things. Yes, they have. <laughs> yes, they have. <laughs> there it is. Ooh, genie. Yeah, the classic sound effect, which if you ever played that Super Star Wars game for the Nintendo, the Eugenie yep. was every five seconds. And there's, of course, there. there. Yeah. This is one where you, like, again, you you feel peril for for the characters because you see that there's danger all the time. It's my first Star Wars Halloween costume was a Jawa made by my grandma who took me to the movie. Oh, wow. Mm. Do you still have any pictures of that? That would be great. Oh, man. I don't know. This that that sand crawler was a phenomenal model, and they sold a, ra- a radio controlled one. Kenner did it was very very rare. I think they only had it for I like 1978. 
But what, That's what the I, about I this 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 thing for me was the fact that um the size was so huge on uh, for this hand color. Yes. Just talk about between the size this and the and the opening with the Star Destroyer. Yeah, it's the scale, the scope. Put on the restraining bolt. <laughs> I love how they all laugh when he gets it. <laughs> like that's a funny moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love when those astromechs get scared. If the Jawas had like Bubba sound dialects. This is another great piece of world building too. Ben Burke creating these these different languages and sound effects for these different droids. There's our 5D4. Yep. I always thought this R5 was D4. Kind of a that's thing. from the yeah. That's the This was There's creepy to me too. I, and waking up. I I look at that now, that character with the telescoped eyes, think reminds me of Wally from Pixar. Oh, yeah. There's the power Wally. droid. Or gonk droid as it's become affectionately gonk. labeled. Gonk. And I love here how he kind of hops. This is uh Kenny Baker making this happen. I always think that one looks like a clown. Well, not C-3PO, but the one before that has a yeah. clown on the face. Like almost a dead... Um, there, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like a dead protocol. You're right. Board. I like that you guys pick up things that I don't necessarily see all the time. and Like, this is fun. This is great. That was great. I love it. Then we get to see um, a newer edition uh, since 1977. 1997 There's, is a special edition adding. But your backs, yeah. They've added a ton of Oh, they've added a mobile dewback. They've added a lot of stormtroopers. Used to be just a couple, and they pick up a piece of the droid. Mm-hmm. But it does. It is great. You see that one in the background that's not moving. That used to be the only one that was there, and it didn't move its head. Hmm. I always wondered what that was. Like what? What did piece? <laughs> yeah, of droid I was wondering when he says that. Looks like a droid. Three PO's keychain. It's like or, well. <laughs> <laughs> what did he, yeah, what did he How will I open there? my bottle? They knew. Yes. Now R2 is asleep. Wait. The music, there's some moments in this where the music sounds very 70s, and this little huh, 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 sounds very. Now, here comes through Peel's uh, kind of manic anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. To, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I quote this movie, when it's gone, I find myself wanting to quote the sound effects and the music as well, because we know this so well. You guys mm-hmm. get the right. same way? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's even hard to like talk about like all the different types of things that you see or remember as as you're a fan watching it. You look for but right. the music cues, like yeah, out of place things. Like oh, that's not really totally right. I meant to say, first saw the rebel troopers. The guys when they were focused on the guys' uh, chin strap was a little to the skew to the side. Like yeah. always trying to draw me nuts. Put <laughs> <laughs> that on right. A little, a little off. 17 minutes, 10 seconds until, until we meet the main character. 17 minutes, 10 seconds. That's that's pretty gutsy. That's pretty gutsy yeah. storytelling. It's a lot of setup. Yeah. And the, uh, this, this, the woman, this isn't even her actual voice. Her voice is dubbed. Oh, is that right? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. What? Look how they're scared the of her. dubbed? Yeah. I love how he's holding his belt as he's walking across. Very kind of, he's got that teen swagger, that kind of cocksuredness about him. Uh, but he's also very much in a rut. And th- this this exchange is very fascinating too because uh, we see some some adult language. <laughs> that, that's my definition of adult language. Yeah, I remember thinking, why is he playing in the oh, shut, shut up? up? That's so mean. Here yeah. comes the line. Here, listen to the line. Now we're yep. 
Okay. I've never thought that was whiny. I, oh, I mean, I've it always is thought that was whiny. Oh, that's always <laughs> been whiny. Yeah, totally whiny. But have you whiny. always thought it, or is it because of just the sort of the, the natural cultural conversation? No, but that's, no I've that's always thought it. Do. Okay. Well, here's the that thing. That is you what a 19-year-old would do. Room. I mean, trust me. I exactly. Have. You ask a kid to go clean his room, he's like, oh, but I was going to go with my friends. Like that's I want to get on and play PS4. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, realistic. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Mark did a good job. Absolutely. <laughs> I've always wondered if our, if people used to say that R2 did that and other people said, no, that just sort of happened or people said it's the force. What do, where do you guys stand on that? Um, I think it's just opportunity. It just happens, you know? Yeah. I agree. I don't know how R2 could have done that. It just, it's the force. I also, I also think that C3O kind of leans over and says, hey, what about that one? You know, hey, he's my buddy. But he didn't say like that, but like, I think he prefers that one anyway. So obviously. Oh, yeah. He's worked with him before. Yeah. All right, let's go. You have to say, I, in watching all of this, the, I've taken in the homestead much more. There have been several pullback scenes where they show the whole homestead with like the, I don't know the, right. what they call that, the man-made canyon or whatever, their courtyard or their Bears home. Canyon, yeah. It's just, it's just so cool because I just watched Phantom Menace not too long ago. And then oh, yeah. with Rise of Skywalker and the return to this location, it just, it's, it's become so much more iconic. That's true. Mm-hmm. And there we get what you get more context in, in world building with a reference to Biggs and him. We get the the notion of his. I mean, we can go through the hero's journey while we're watching this, like we do with my students. But you know, when oh. he's about he's about to get the call to adventure. Class, right? Yeah, <laughs> he's about to get the call to adventure. Did you have your notes ready? Are these all internal? Like, it's, uh, I've I've right. given this lecture a million times. And it's one of my have. favorite things to talk about. See, he enters him as his counterpart with R5. Sure. Well, yeah, now he can just be, uh, now he's just with his friend. Right. This part is so rich contextually and <laughs> mythologically. You learn a lot about these characters. Who's the. Who's the hero? Who's who's the um, ancillary character? I always wondered about that, where he tries to get the gunk out of there and jammed, and he, all of a sudden this message comes up. Be something R2 decides to do. How would that trigger? Hmm. Well, there was a lot of carbon scoring in there, whatever that means. I, was, I don't know. I always yeah, thought he sure. just sort of accidentally hit it. I mean, it's all just... Uh, a lot. There's a lot of happenstance in, in good fortune that leads to things because that's why this is hope. Uh, you knew a little something more than you think. He's just more of, you know, yeah. I always feel like that about R2. He's just intuitive for that way. I remember when I saw the special edition in theaters, when he says, going into Tashi Station, people laughed. And then when Luke says, who is she? She's beautiful. Everyone laughs again. Because, of course, what happens huh. in Return of the Jedi. Right. Oh. But the revel, the reveal that they're actually brother and sister. But yeah. that was something that Lucas didn't decide until after the Empire Strikes Back was made. Hmm. Well, not only that, but you think back to that, knowing all that stuff, like he says, you're beautiful. Like, why wouldn't you say that about anybody that you see, regardless exactly. of their relative or not? Exactly. It's very natural, and you know, again, it's that that idea of that romanticized ideal of the the princess in peril. Hmm. This is the late 1970s, after all. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that they can the, say all these the things. Series. Oh, I know. It's amazing that they can talk about the Dune scene, and Old Ben, and all these things, and we just go with it. The first time you see you just yeah. go with it because it just seems, like, oh, yeah, of course. I want to know more about this, and you just kind of go along for the ride. But it's not intimidating. Like sometimes Tolkien, the first go around, can be really intimidating because of the names and places and people. But this just, it just kind of flows off the tongue. Huh. He's such a tricky little guy. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I didn't see nothing there. And I love that R2 is stubborn too. He's he's almost like a uh a, a, a precocious eight year old. 
<laughs> that loud laughs there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> C3PO is so like he's so uh what's the name when when you like abusive just buddy up like a brown <laughs> yeah. noser. Oh no, like a brown yeah. noser. Like oh, yeah, you better find that message or else, you know. He just met this guy. I mean, who would, or what reliability does he have on him? Here's the blue milk. Yep. I love blue milk. No, it's cereal. <laughs> Wizard. It's it's classic. You tell a teenager something and they want to do the opposite. And that and that makes it for for your realism in a fictional world. Mm-hmm. Is that Tupperware? I think they've just went out and bought Tupperware for that, probably. Right? Probably. I love it. <laughs> you drink out of that? I would if I had it. Colin was so mean. I always felt like he just never really gave Luke a chance. Oh, well, he's just protective. But he didn't, you're right, he didn't know. At that point, we don't know his viewers. Right, Right. that's true. When he says Academy. Academy. I was going to say, when he says Academy, (laughs) he means Imperial. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never figured that one out. Hmm. Interesting. But there's also kind of an association there that when he means the Academy, he really means he's going to ultimately follow Biggs. Because uh, I think in the comics, they talk about Biggs uh, starting to go to the Empire, but then he joins Rebellion right away. Well, it reminds me of that um, that story that uh, it's a young adult. It's even a, I think it's it's a chapter book uh, with Zare. Zara Leonis. Uh-huh. Yeah, Zara Leonis reminds me of that story. <laughs> How would I can forget that? Jason Fry. Yeah. Okay, so here's the moment, right? right. This is. Oh. And I, this is one of the things where I wondered did it hit us when we were growing up, or is it because we just heard and seen so much about it over time? Oh, I'm sure the first time I saw this, I was like, boring. <laughs> right. <laughs> didn't hit, you know, it didn't, it wasn't action for a seven year old. <laughs> sure. I typically but, pause this in class. The music rises, though. Oh. Yeah, that music. Were we, oh. Tom, what were you going to say about it? Even yours. Oh, I no, I was just. But now, now we look at it, and it means so much. There's so much in that gaze. There's so much context to that moment, that that rock, that location, and the, the two sons, you know, looking out into the horizon, dreaming of a tomorrow that he thinks is never going to get here, and even that the sun's falling down means his chances of leaving are slowly melting away. Mm. Like he's yeah. he's dreaming of going somewhere else, but his chances are becoming smaller and smaller. It's, it's not unlike how students feel when they're getting out of high school, getting ready to go to college, or not being sure where they're going to go after they get out of the safety zone. It's it's really a beautiful transition quick, piece about adolescence. I have a quick question: When he before he goes down or comes out of the little uh, room there, there's like mm-hmm. a ship that Chief Three O is behind. Do we know what yeah. ship that is? That was another one of the land speeders. Is that ship? I thought it was just oh, sort okay. of like a. A fifty-seven Chevy farm. land speeder. <laughs> I was gonna say a farm gear. Or something. <laughs> I thought it was weird. They were farmers in the desert. Well, you know what they're farming. You know what the moisture evaporators do, right? Water, right? Water. Yeah, suck, suck the water out. Yeah, water. Sandwiches. Look, Kenobi. That's right. Sandwiches. You know, you, you know that that uh, location still exists. Of course, it's in the Rise of Skywalker, but you can actually visit it in Tunisia. I'm not sure how safe it is these days to go, but I would love to do that someday. Well, that'd be Maybe quite one a pill place you think you'd go. Oh yeah. Cabbage. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy drink. Stir it up. Reminds Some me of the Mr. Fusion. There. See, there's there's a reference yeah. <laughs> to the word to hell, which is I think interesting because hell is a Christian thing. Well, it's that too. It's like you say, that's just a vernacular of word of talking about, you know, right. See you in hell or whatever the case may be. Like, that's just verbiage we made up. Sure. Why does it belong in space? Right. Well, that's what I mean. He's a crazy old wizard. The wizard is a kind of like a, I don't know, made up word construct. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been a little confused. Tuscan Raiders are humans who have just 
modified themselves to be able to survive in the desert. Is that right? Or are they actual creatures? I, I think, I think they're just um, people or entities that have just chosen to live in the desert and they've kind of taken on sort of a, a sophisticated primal uh, way of life. Okay. There's a, uh, there's a great mythology of a uh, Star Wars mythology. Remember that book that has uh, the dragon, the crate dragon on the cover that yes. came out last year? Uh, there's some, some great stuff about the same people in there, about the Tuscals. Ooh. Check that one out. What's that pull next to Luke? Nope. That's his gun. That's a giant rifle. Yeah. Oh, it's his gun. Oh, okay. I missed that. And then that. this okay. part, did you know, is like the same thing, but they rewind what he does. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, which I don't know why they did that, but it maybe just looked better in the editing room. Hmm. This part is one of my most uh, frustrated parts in all of Star Wars. The most, uh, what's the story wise or film? Or? No, 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 not story wise. See that, and that that rock was never there. That was inserted for the Blu ray, I believe. It used to be R2 was just in the open. Oh, which yeah. I always, I always uh, kind of like because it yeah. made him more exposed and there was more peril. And they didn't care about him, so they ignored him. Okay, this is the part I can't stand. <laughs> and that's even updated that for last Disney Plus, part, right? Uh, I don't know about that, but that last part where they just the last growl at the end is the only one that is actually from the original cut. And they, I guess uh-huh. Lucas kept wanting to add more and more and more to that crate dragon call to make it more fearsome. But to me, it just sounds kind of cartoony. I don't know. This is a great uh, review. I always thought he checked, he checked his eyes like that because I thought Luke got blinded. But I guess he's checking his pulse, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. I, don't know that. I just realized he says hello there here and in Revenge of the Sith. Hmm. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I never made that connection. <laughs> I know that. Okay, so I, 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 of course, this is all a huge retcon. But yeah. for years, people have said, why doesn't Obi Wan recognize R two, or why doesn't R two recognize Obi Wan? Because they fought together a lot right. in the Clone Wars. Uh-huh. Anybody want to weigh in on that? I have my theories. Hmm. I think Ben lost it. I mean, on, I, I mean, I always thought that the fact that he was busy, he's so confused. You know, time was passed. He just doesn't know what to do anymore. So I've always felt like he just doesn't really recognize him. I guess I always just made sense of it all by time in general, and there are probably thousands of astromech droids that are blue. Yeah, that's. I kind of thought of it. Maybe they think of astromechs like we do phones. You know, I mean, even <laughs> you've had a lot of adventures. Our uh, Obi Wan had a lot of adventures with a lot of astromechs. You know, R four and all kinds of different astromechs. And also, he might have might be kind of playing um, playing it smooth and undercover because he's been hiding the secret for nineteen years. He's not going to blow it in a quick conversation with an astromech. Mm. <laughs> but, you know, 19 years in the desert, that's a long time. It's a really long time. So it's the other thing I, thought, I never thought of, like, watching this as, you know, we didn't know he's protecting Luke, right, obviously. Right. And for him to, like, meet Luke here, and obviously he probably might have seen Luke go out from the homestead and, you know, watching his movements and making sure he's okay. And, you know, and now he's in some peril, and he comes to rescue him. He realizes a bigger thing going on. I love this transitional wipe here too, where he picks him up and I go to the next scene. Go right up. <laughs> okay, this this uh, few minutes here uh, gives you so much information and so much context. You also get about three stages of the hero's journey, but you learn a lot about the force that actually uh, supports the idea of midichlorians too. There's the Clone Wars reference. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, the handing of the sacred talisman. Well, this is interesting too. Is like, let's give him a giant laser sword that he might hurt himself with. He's never seen before. Can you imagine how many times Obi Wan must have replayed this moment in his mind before it actually happened? I was thinking that too. Like you said, I want to blow his cover. And then C3PO conveniently shuts down, which I always think is kind of neat. So they can just have the moment together. With R2, it's been around for the whole thing and no memory wipe. I always thought it was white. It looks very white to me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the. Yeah. Like Ahsoka's. Oh. I always find myself hanging on every word of this conversation. I just feel like there's, I've missed something all along. And it does always seem to color in the, color it in every single time I watch this. The way that he delivers that line by kind of the long look to his side before he says it, he betrayed and murdered your father. Like he knows he's about to tell an untruth, even though he had no idea that the script was Mm going to go that way, but it just works so beautifully. He's such a pro and it just, Elegant. Here you go. Oh. Energy field created by all living things. Midichlorians. I did not article for Star Wars Insider right. I use that line to support what midichlorians are. There comes <laughs> the real call to adventure. We've got the whole thing. I seem to have found it. <laughs> oh. Kind of need to think of Rogue One for this part. Oh yeah, my father would know how to retrieve it. Here comes two steps of journey back to back. Hmm. He's so happy this part because this is it. This is my big pitch. There's the refusal of the call. I'm I'm responsible. I've got duties here. Obi Wan leans into a little bit of guilt. Hmm. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I'm scared. Such a beautiful uh, metaphor for adolescence. I mean, think about it, how every word that Obi Wan is saying is so uh-huh. critical to the last nineteen wait, years of his existence. It? Yeah, it's just so it's, heavy. Like he's been waiting his whole yeah. life for this. That's a very Jedi thing. I, I, he has to do this, but I got he has to make up the decision on his own. I can't force him to do it. It's got to be hard. It's a very parent thing. And this is really the first time we see any other Imperials besides at the beginning. We're thirty seven yeah, minutes now. Yeah, that's haircut right there. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> this interior set is just wonderful. If we if we if we could have meetings like this at school, I'd want to be in here have meetings every day. <laughs> Until your boss walks in, like, oh no, be quiet. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Took thirty what? Thirty-eight minutes to see Grand Moff Tarkin. Thirty-seven minutes. Well, the other thing I noticed too is like the guy in the white over to the left. Mm-hmm. I don't see. You'll see that uh, from Credit. Credit was all in white too. What was his rank? He was. Uh, was it, oh, commander. It wasn't a military rank, right? He's, yeah, special like a special force, something like that. Yeah, it's like Thrawn. There's there's a couple that are oh, elite, right. elite. Yeah, right. Good call. There's a wonderful nose flare coming up here with some acting. There it is. (laughs) 
This is proof that uh, Vader is just sort of a been around, but nobody really knows what he's capable of in the Empire right. until this until this kind of stuff. Even Tarkin's like still thrown by it. I always thought that was interesting that Vader uses like pinchy fingers to yeah. pin to choke him. He's like, I don't need 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 my own whole hand. I just need my two fingers. Because he's like a bug to Vader, and he doesn't even yeah. move. He barely moves or release him. I think this is kind of the the start of Vader's growth. Uh, in many ways, at least for some of these high-ranking officers. Well, and I wonder how many times had the Emperor had him out on missions to track down Jedi and whatnot. And this, and like you said, Dan, this is his first real foray into the politics of the Empire. Right. This part is is uh, confusing too. Side by side. In other words, stormtroopers don't don't have anything to hide because they're not scared of anybody. In theory, that might be true because they're paid soldiers. Uh, but obviously, I think Obi Wan is also kind of adding it on to kind of stack the deck in his oh. favor. Hmm. Paul, well, yeah, I'm kind of getting him like convinced most. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's kind gotta, of that idea. Like, he's gotta hey, pull a couple of tricks to make it happen. Uh-huh. I love the droids. I love that effect. That lens yeah, effect. Yeah. I think yeah, it's that just so Vaseline cool. on Vaseline on the camera lens, I believe. I love how it's did, you want, they have like, did you want a land speeder upper. when you first saw this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like Corvette, man. This is a, a pretty ghastly thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is pretty dark. Fri- fr- skeleton? Fried skeletons because they've been burned so badly from laser blasts. I mean, that's pretty horrific. Well, the other thing, like that laser blast, to me, like you're hitting people with, you know, usually just the blaster bolt that goes through and they die. But these these are like skeletons. They've been burned. Yeah. Charred. Yeah. So it's like, it's still even. Worse than that. So, and the way they are, like their bodies are positioned, like they were running and fell, and then they were almost like burned after they were right. dead. I mean, it's I don't trying know. Trying to escape pretty, somehow. Pretty I think they tried to bur- they burned them out. Basically, they might have been hiding. Oh, they there's a, them out. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. There, there's a, a retelling of A New Hope um, by Tom, the the guy that wrote the Origami Yoda books, Tom... Tom Engelberger. Like, yes, he did the Jedi one, but there's um, there's a Star Wars one. And basically, they take different sections of the movie from different characters, individual first-person perspectives, and there's a whole chapter about Leia explaining what happens when she's injected with this medicine. Oh, really? And it's, and it's canonical. It talks about how she's tortured and tricked into almost revealing the plans but she doesn't it's like her dad talking to her a couple of times and vader talking to her a couple of times and tarkin and her almost saying it's almost like she's in a dream state you know like when you're dreaming and telling you're wanting to talk and you can feel yourself trying to talk even though you're asleep Mm. that's how it's explained it's really powerful wow it's just i thought that was so weird all these technology advances and whatnot and she's getting injected with some some fluid you know is that weird i think it's a weird way to do it kind of a late 70s um uh, crime TV show yeah. scary tactic interrogation. Mm. This is the uh, uh, the the he accepts the call and it's time to cross the first threshold into the new path of adventure where you leave the comforts of the known world and go to a place that's scary mm. and different has its own set of guidelines. Mm. And look at that; they're literally on the precipice. Hey, look down here on the horizon. This is the world. This is for you. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> As we begin to wrap up the show, I want to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a cup of coffee with me and for helping to spread the word about our Star Wars family we've got here at Coffee with Kenobi. Be sure to tune in Monday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash live or www.facebook.com slash coffeewithkenobi 
and have a cup of coffee, tea, or any beverage of your choosing with me as we continue the conversation. To join us in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group, and share your Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions in a family-free, spoiler-free place that is also drama-free, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community and be a part of the conversation, talk about this week's show, or just talk some Star Wars. It is a lot of fun, and you'll make some new friends as well as catch up with longtime friends as well. I also want to thank all of my new and longtime friends who joined me in the CWK Cantina and let you know how much I appreciate your help and encouragement and love being able to give back to you with CWK Pour Over, the exclusive weekly podcast not heard anywhere else. I want to thank Dennis Keithley, Jason Hall, Angela Sauce, Chris Kavarka, Aaron Harris, Alexander Moylan, Ross Halliban, Jeff Ellis, David Nicely, Jessica Berry, Colby Mead, Frank Mulder, LJ Souter, Dustin Mills, Robert Avila, Mark Suter, Nick Deco, Eric Struthers, Jared Cantor, Brian McKinney, Daz Davies, Thea Selby, Chris Metz, Caroline Maselli, Jim Capron, Blake Weaver, Dan Ream, Kurt McKellen, Christine, Simbad Deftradarian, Ian Thompson, Alex Procasio, Hannah, Tyler Pampa, Connie Shee, Susan Gray, Chelsea Sansbury, Josh Boylan, Yancey Evans, Sagacious Crum, and Greg McLaughlin. If you want an additional way to help out the show, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash support and join us in the Coffee with Kenobi Cantina. It's a great way to support and help out the show, and 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital to support the incredibly important work they are doing to help these brave children and their families. Plus, contributors at the CWK All-Star level can watch a video podcast of CWK Pour Over hosted by me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. In addition to being part of the community on Facebook, please don't forget to visit our website at www.coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, live video, and so much more. If you have a question for me or just want to share your thoughts on the air, feel free to email me at danz at coffeewithkenobi.com and I'll share them on the show. You can also connect with me on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R. There are also a lot of ways to connect with me and Coffee with Kenobi on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi and check us out on Pinterest. You can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network, and you can find my writing on CWK's website as well as starwars.com where I'm an official blogger there as well as on IGN where I contribute articles on Star Wars as well as other pop culture topics. And if you're considering starting a podcast or a blog, let me know how I can help you get started and help you make your creative vision a reality. Be sure to check out danzymedia.com and we can get the process started. I am also available to come to your school, conference, business, or organization to talk about how to tap into your strengths and help you bring out your very best. I want to inspire you to be inspired. Don't be afraid to take that first step into a larger world. Thanks, as always, to our CWK sponsors, especially MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, our travel partner and your one-stop shop for all things Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the Disney Cruise Lines, or anywhere you want to go on the planet. Please go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel to book your magical vacation and help support Coffee with Kenobi in the process. If you like this show, please tweet out that you're listening share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. And if the Force is especially with you, please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on iTunes or Google Podcasts. Every review makes a huge difference and helps to spread the word. Go to iTunes and search Coffee with Kenobi and you'll see the show there. My circle of friends has grown so much because of each and every one of you, and it means so much to me that we have such a wonderful Star Wars community. Okay, as promised, that is where we cut off part one of the commentary. Again, if you want to listen to the entire thing, I hope you have enjoyed it. We certainly enjoyed recording it and sending it to you. All you need to do is go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi and type in Star Wars or a New Hope commentary or anything like that. You'll see it at the very top. You'll see it all over social media. And again, it's 100% completely for free. If you have any questions about that, what movie you'd like to see us tackle next time or something like that, please let me know. I kind of think it would be fun to put all the existing 10 more films in a hat 
and just draw one out. And that's the one we do, of course, I think people would expect, and logically so. You'll, they'll do Star Wars first, then Empire, then Jedi, and then go through the prequels and go to 7, 8, 9, and Rogue One and so. But I don't know. I think it might be kind of interesting and keep us on our toes if we just put all the movies in a hat. So just let me know. In the meantime, have a great week and weekend. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for.